Hi guys, this is Mike Hibbert back with another Python Django tutorial for you. And this time we're going to extend um, a little bit more into the user management side of things. Um, last time we looked at how to log in and how to log out. This time I'm going to take it a bit further and start and show you how to actually register users. So, um, this is possibly going to be a bit shorter than my normal um, videos because it's not a very complicated thing but I think they'll also lead us nicely into a future tutorial all to do with dealing with Django forms which is um, something that is really really helpful and help you to set up um, pages so that you can collect information from users and have them inserted into databases and be filtered and all sorts of wonderful things um, so this this subject in itself leads quite nicely into that so uh, I'm looking forward to, to moving on through into that which we'll do uh, possibly in the next tutorial so this one is all about how do you register a user well uh, registration is just basically getting the information from the user off the web page and then bunging it in a database after you've validated it and made sure that it all matches and is correct um, that's it in its simplest form uh, it's very often registration processes can involve things like uh, capture or recapture um, they can also involve an extra step where you might send an email to uh, the person who's tried to register with the site and uh, once you keep their data in the database you don't actually make their account active until they follow a link that you send them through an email um, we're not going to go to that extent this time round but uh, hopefully this should give you the beginnings of the idea of how to actually go about making that that set of process and registration process on your own sites so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our URLs file which is the main URLs file for our Django Django project so inside of our Django project we have the main set and inside of our URLs file here we're gonna put in a couple of more URLs to handle the registration and here you can see we've got um, the URLs from our last example which is all to do with login and, and logging out and seeing whether your passwords valid or invalid etc so we're just gonna tack on two more on the end these are accounts register and accounts register success so this is what happens when your system says that the information that you've entered is correct and, and valid and your registration is complete and as you can see they pass through to some um, view functions that we're keeping inside of our main projects module Django test views register user and also register success so just two views to handle the registration now what's in a registration form well we have a username and a password and that's the very basic uh, user registration details um, it can be extended later on to include an email address first name last name or address details whatever you need from your user um, and that's what we're going to cover in the example or the tutorial that I'm going to build about using Django forms because this is this is possibly one of the the most uh, common ways that you'll see forms in action um, other than you know obviously making comments on somebody's articles or um, you know a, a blog or something like that this is this is one of the most common places you'll see forms in use in the registration process so in the next lesson to do with that I'm going to use this and extend it to include extra details other than just a username and a password but for this basic tutorial we're going to stick with that just so you can get the idea of how it works so we've added these two URLs we just need to go over to our um, our views and here we have all the, the views left over from when we were doing our login and logout um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in something brand new and that's the user creation form 
This is stored in Django contrib auth forms. So remember we were using auth to do our authentication. Well, auth is a package and it contains amongst other things like functionality to log in and log out, a set of forms. There's not just this user creation form, there's a few other bits and bobs in there and if you want to go and look that up on Google or whatever, feel free to do so and you'll find that there's, there's some already created forms that are really quite useful in just getting you set up and ready. But we're going to use this user creation form first. So, how are we going to use it? Right, so we've got our register user URL that was set and we're going to pass it through to this view named register underscore user. We're going to first of all look at the request object and see whether it has a method of post. So remember in our forms we have we have uh, methods for forms which are either post or get and we're just basically checking has this gone through um, a method or a process of being posted to um, the first time round that should say no because there's no data being posted from a form to this URL in the second time round it should say post and in that case we're going to then handle what happens when somebody posts some registration information through and all we're really going to do is we're just going to take our user creation form and pass through the values in the post dictionary and that should create us a form object and in the process of all of that it also also should validate the form and say is the information correct so if it is correct we're going to say if the form is a valid form or correct save the form and that will save our registration information for the new user dead simple and then finally we're going to use the new class that we discussed in our last tutorial just to use the HTTP response redirect over to the register success page and that's what we are going to do if the information is correct from the user who we wanted to register. So first of all, we've written some code, but this is code that's going to happen on the next time around for the user's experience. So what happens the first time that the user visits the register page? Well, we want to set up the register user page to have some information. Now the first of all we want to make sure for security sake that we've got our cross-site request forgery token stuck in there so this is uh, similar to the code you'll have seen in the last example so we've got our cross-site forgery um, request forgery class and then we're gonna pop in to the arguments dictionary a, a blank user creation form. Notice there's no post in its arguments. So this one is just a bog standard version of that form and it has no information put in it to start with. It's just empty. It knows how to 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 destroy uh, or render rather its uh, its fields um, but it doesn't know any data yet. And then we're just going to pass to render to response using the template register.html and these arguments that we've set up. So now that we've done that, let's have a quick look at what that register.html is. As usual, it's a template that extends from the base HTML and we're going to override the content block again. And then we're going to just put in a form which has an action of passing information back to itself to the register URL using the post method so that we can then track that and see have we had information posted to us yes we have our old friend the CSRF token which tells us this forms actually bona fide and from this website and not been uh, made up and sent from someone else who's trying to hijack the site and then we have the actual form itself that we've passed through and all we need to do is just insert it 
it knows how to draw itself onto the page in, in HTML, so we don't need to mess around with any of that. And then finally, we're just going to stick the register button on the end and close the form tag so that we know that that's the end of the form. Dead simple. No complicated things to do just yet. It might get a little bit more complex when we start actually extending forms in our forms tutorial, which comes next, but not much more complicated. Um, but very, very simple. No messing about. Very, uh, very, very time consuming. Uh, well, no, not very time consuming, rather. And that's pretty much it. So now that we've done the register view, all we need to do is put the red the registration success page in and as with all the other ones you saw the log out, the logout page etc all we do is we render response to register success.html and that is just basically a page that goes um, overriding the base template again you have registered click here to log in again well you know to log in anyway so that being the case that's pretty much our registration process fully set up um now like i said before a lot of people like to have a little bit of an extra uh, an extra amount of security in there so um you know Possibly in this case, when you save this form, you may well choose to not have the, the user act, be fully active in the system. Um, you might choose to send them an email to say, here's a link to click that to confirm that you, that you really want to be registered or that you're human. So at this point, you could extend that. But for the basics, we're not going to do that. Next time we will, and then you'll see how that, that works. So very simple let's start up the uh, the web server and then let's go to our URL so notice we've gone to accounts register here and if I just click refresh the web servers up and run and there you can see it's rendered its own fields for us in the form it's also added an extra bit of information saying that this is required and you need a password and a password confirmation so um, I've already messed around yeah so I'm gonna put test user 3 in because I've already created a few test users and I'm gonna write a, a password of something um, make sure they match and then click register and the winner is yeah so it looks like we've registered so then I could then uh, log in as test user three using the password that I've set up. And there we are. The login process is already working. Um, probably not a great idea to have people fully active in a system unless you know unless it's okay and you don't think they can do any damage or it's really important that you get them into the system and get them using your website straight away um, most people at least send out a confirmation email of some description or even just put a checkbox on there to say that they agree to the terms and conditions of their website something like that um, now if we use our admin system the Django admin system we can log in as our super user which is Mike for me and if we go to the user tables, the users table rather, we can now see that we've got a user there. And inside there, if we click through onto the user, we've got fields for the first name, last name, email address. Um, it's currently ticked as active. If you want to disable in somebody in the system because they've been a bit naughty and putting all sorts of stuff on your forum or whatever on your website, then you can act deactivate them by unticking that box and then just saving the information and that means you haven't lost their email or address or anything like that and you can send them a nice little email saying cut it out or I'm going to completely remove you from the site um, and if they decide to you know, behave then you can reactivate them using that tick box again 
uh, other little permissions that they can have are staff status, super user status, there's various groups you can add them to and also in connection with the article package the Django admin has already recognized that that's packages in there so it's got article can add article can change article can delete article and then you can add these permissions into the right hand window if you need to for that particular user um, and finally a bit of information about what date they joined, what time it was. Yeah, that's definitely the right time, two minutes ago. And the last time they logged in was a couple of minutes ago as well. So there you go. That's how you can register users with your system. Now, next time I'm gonna take that a bit further and show you how to extend that so that you can actually you know include an email address and the first name and last name in the whole registration process but this should be enough to get you going and I'm pretty sure that if you did a little bit more googling yourself after looking at this video you could probably go a bit further yourself so if you manage to do that feel free to, to leave some comments in the in the box below and let me know how you got on um, I'm always interested in, in other people's uh, experiences, um, you know, after the after the lessons and how they get on with the information. So please leave us with any comments you like. Um, if this inf this video was instructional and you, you learned something from this, please click the like button. If you want to see more in the series, please click the subscribe button. And if you have anything else that you want to say, or you know, if you want to send me a nice love letter or whatever, I send a comment in the box below okay thanks for watching